Hello everyone, and in this video, we'll be learning how to conduct serial dilution. Now, more specifically, we are going to be looking at the unknown solution A. We are looking to estimate the concentration of unknown solution A. First of all, we are going to conduct serial dilution and produce a range of concentrations of starch solution. And then we are going to perform an iodine test by adding two drops of iodine solution into each concentration. Then we can use these results and compare with the results we get for solution A in order to estimate its concentration. There are two tests here. Number one is a qualitative test where we will compare the colors by sight. So this is a quite subjective test. And number two, we are going to be conducting a quantitative test where we will measure absorbance using a spectrophotometer. The more intense the color is, the higher the absorbance should be. Let's first talk about how to conduct serial dilution. Now in the question given, you have to determine whether they want you to reduce the concentration of solution by half or dilute the solution by a factor of 10 each time. Now to reduce the concentration of solution by half each time, we have to add an equal volume of solution and equal volume of distilled water. If it's diluting the solution by a factor of 10, then usually it's 1 cm cube of the solution added to 9 cm cube of a distilled water to make up a solution of 10 cm cube. Now in this experiment, they want us, right, the manual wants us to reduce the concentration of solution by half each time. Therefore, our diagram should look something like the following. We can see in this completed diagram that the concentration of starch solution is half each time. 1% becomes 0.5%, which is diluted to 0.25%, which is then diluted to 0.125%, and then 0.0625%. To achieve the final volume of 10 cm cube available for use, so this is the final volume, we take 20 cm cube of 1% starch solution and remove 10 cm cube of it and put it into the next beaker. And to that, we add 10 cm cube of distilled water, so equal amounts of the previous solution and distilled water in order to make 0.5% starch solution. Now, this is 10 plus 10, so that's 20. But don't forget, we remove another 10 in order to add to the next beaker. And therefore, 20 minus 10 would result in 10 cm cube of 0.5 starch solution available for use. This procedure is repeated for each consecutive concentration until 0.0625%. We can see here at the last beaker, because it's the final concentration, no more um solution is removed from the beaker and therefore it's just 10 plus 10 cm cube and this results in 20 cm cube of 0.0625% starch solution available for use. Now that we are done with our calculations, we can then proceed to actually perform serial dilution in real life. Make sure to label your beakers. We have seven different beakers here. Well, I'm about to get the final one from somewhere else. Um, because other than the five concentrations, we are also doing one that is 0%, which acts as a control. So it's just 10 cm cube of distilled water. And also number seven, beaker number seven would have unknown solution A. Okay, pro tip, um, with serial dilutions, since the volume of water used in each beaker is the same, which is 10 cm cube, I am adding 10 cm cube of water to each beaker first. 
uh, for each concentration and then only transferring the solutions from one beaker to the other. The first beaker here is 1%, okay, and this is me taking 10 cm cube of that and putting it into a next beaker. Then I mix it by pumping the syringe up and down in order to mix those solutions. Then I take 10 cm cube of the now 0.5% and add it to the next beaker forming 0.25%. There is already water in it, so I do not need to add that. Okay, and then I continue this process for the remaining concentrations. Mixing is very important again, uh, so that we will get more accurate results. Now for the final concentration, since there are 20 cm cube available for use, and we don't want our results to be affected by that, I took 10 cm cube out of the final concentration, which is 0.0625%, and discarded it. So now all the volumes in the beakers are the same. Then this is me adding 10 cm cube of A into the 7 beaker. Shake it a little bit just in case, and then add one drop of iodine solutions, one or two drops, into the beakers, making sure that your drop size is about the same. This is why I added a little bit extra on the first two, because I added too much in the previous beakers. So I'm trying to make sure that iodine solution drop would be about the same amount in each beaker. Uh, this is me then transferring the liquid into cuvettes, which we'll be using later in the spectral photometer. And this is just because it's just easier to see the color uh, and the intensity through the cuvettes. So yeah, 0% is just distilled water and some iodine. So it will be a little bit yellow. And yeah, that's our results. We can see here that 1% would have a darker appearance and 0.0625% would have the least um, color intensity. So a lighter blue in comparison. Of course, distilled water and iodine is just yellow color because it has no starch in it. Uh, with this, we can actually record our qualitative test results. In this table, the question has provided the key and symbols, so we will follow that. Now, sometimes 1% uh, doesn't actually show like a deep dark blue solution because 1% is quite viscous, right, and could be um, kind of a murky murky or cloudy solution to begin with, so sometimes the blue may appear a little lighter. Now despite this, in your results table, you should always show trend, an appropriate trend. So whatever results you get, make sure your results table reflects that trend, and whatever results you get for A, make sure when you predict the concentration of A, it is according to your results as well. In this case, a would be estimated to have a concentration between 0 and 0 0.0625%. Make sure your estimates are in a range and has units. So that's our qualitative test. Now moving on to our quantitative test. Now while using the spectrophotometer, it's important to first zero the machine with a blank cuvette. This is just a cuvette with distilled water without iodine. So it's just distilled water. After that, we can then put in the cuvette with our solutions in order to measure the absorbance. The machine shines a light beam through the smooth areas of the cuvette, so the rough surface should be facing you. And then you can press enter, okay, and the absorbance reading will be shown on the screen. Absorbance reading shows how much light is absorbed by the solution. So the higher the color intensity, the higher the absorbance should be. This is an example of the results you should be able to get. You can see here that the trend is there. Now, other than that, 
uh, for the previous table as well as this table, make sure that all your concentrations as well as the control, which is 0%, and the unknown is in the table. There should be no units uh, in the body of the table, only in the headers. The same decimal places should be used for all data. And that's it, guys. I hope you learned something today. See you next video.